a very warm welcome to the first session of the One Day National Seminar on the theme Women in Decision Making Roles in Corporates. We have amongst us four very distinguished speakers to deliver their insights and address the gathering on this occasion. May I now take the opportunity to invite on the dais Professor Shandula Goswami, Director, Lifeline Technologies, OPC Private Limited, and former Professor, Department of Business Administration, Tesco University. Thank you, ma'am. Srimati Papuri Chetia, APS, Additional SP, Dibrugan. Dr. Sripanam B. Borwan. <laughs> Professor N. N. Sharma, sir. And Professor Joyti Borwa, sir, the moderator of this session. I would like to take this opportunity to give a formal introduction to all our four distinguished speakers. Professor Chandran Goswami is the former Dean, School of Management Sciences at Tejpur University. She was also the Dean Academic at Gejanamo Chaudhary University. Professor Goswami did her MBA and PhD from Guwahati University and was a British Shredding Fellow in 2004. She has gone as an ARC member to several universities and colleges across India. She is involved with teaching and research at, at Tejpur University and has over 30 years of academic experience. She has produced nine PhDs so far. Professor Goswami acts as a resource person to the faculty development programs conducted by different universities and colleges. In 2019, she attended leadership for academicians programs sponsored by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, where one week of training was in Penn State University in the US. She was also selected for a Fulbright program in the USA last year. She is also a senior certified professional coach. Tejpur University has granted her permission to launch her OPC that will offer life skill related services. Professor Goswami is currently Director, Lifeline Technologies, OPC, Private Limited. Srimuti Papuri Chetia is a distinguished Assam Police Officer. Srimuti Chetia is presently the additional superintendent of police, Assam Police, Dibugar District. She was additional superintendent of police at Special Branch Headquarters, Kahilipara. As a police officer, she has served different capacities and has enormously contributed to the law and order of the state. She has served as the Dep deputy superintendent of police in Bomanga, Chirang, and Moriga districts before joining the Bureau of Investigation of Economic Offenses of Assam Police. For her excellent and extremely dedicated service to the cause of law and order, peace and harmony, she has been the recipient of DGP Silver Medal. We welcome you, ma'am. Dr. Shriparna B. Borwa has 33 years of experience in management, education and in small and medium enterprise development with a trust on entrepreneurship and livelihood promotion. She has also extensive experience in action research and projects relating to development of livelihood clusters, specifically in the northeastern region of India. Since the last three years, she has been actively involved in facilitating creation of a startup ecosystem in Assam and has been regularly mentoring and handholding existing and potential startups in opportunity guidance and scaling up. Dr. Borwa has represented Northeast India in various international forums and lead business delegations globally. She has also represented the country as a speaker in international conferences in countries like Colombia and Malaysia. She has regularly provided academic and consultancy support to MBA departments of all major universities of Assam, like Tata Institute of Social Sciences, National Institute of Rural Development, and Assam Administrative Staff College. Dr. Borwa is a member of the Board of Management of the School of Vocational Education, IGNO, the Northeast Network, the Cancer Research Foundation, etc. We welcome you, ma'am. We also have amongst us Professor Nipetaran Sharma, 
Professor Soma is serving as professor in management in Krishna Kanapon University of Indian University, Guwahati since April 19, 2016. Prior to joining AKHSOU, Professor Soma served as director and ONGC chair professor of Assam Institute of Management. He was awarded the PhD degree by Guwahati University in 2000 for the thesis entitled Role of Consumer Cooperatives of Assam in Rural Marketing and Analytical Study. He is an MBA with specialization in marketing management and personal management from Guwahati University. Prior to joining the Assam Institute of Management in 1990, Sir had worked in National Institute of Rural Development, Northeast Regional Center as research supervisor and supervised an evaluation study of family welfare programs in 11 districts of Assam. He was also associated with the Department of Commerce, Guwahati University, Tejpur University, and Center for Distance Education, Northeastern Hill University, Shillong. We welcome you, sir. I would now like to request Professor Jody Boron, Director of Pujakumatria School of Social Sciences, to moderate this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, and uh, welcome to the first technical session of this conference. National Seminar on Women in Decision Making Role in Corporation. Um, already we have an excellent uh, inaugural session where we have had two speakers who actually uh, sort of set the tone for the next uh, discourses, raised some of the questions which will be followed up in this uh, session as well. Uh, what I uh, intend to do uh, is something like this, that probably I will request um, the speakers to present their views initially uh, for say about 15-20 minutes uh, because we have roughly one and a half hours time uh, with us, uh, it's at 11.30 so we can go up to one. Uh, then uh, I will open the floor uh, for interaction, you can uh, you know, interject with the, and then also interact with the speakers on the themes they have spoken about and uh, if time permits then I will try to sort of uh, sum up the discussion and also present uh, some of my thoughts on the theme and also the questions which will be raised by the speakers. I guess that uh, probably we have four core themes to discuss in this session. Uh, if uh, I may say so, it's suggestive of course, it's not the themes that we have to follow. The one is the, the status and trends of women in the corporates because this was raised by the two speakers in the inaugural session. So what is exactly the status, what are the, what are the trends, that is uh, whether we are improving and if we are improving and where we are improving, where we are not, is it across the board, across the sectors or specific to some sector, yet some of the sectors are completely excluded from the women's participation. So that's one. The second thing probably can be uh, regarding uh, the after the status we can go for the why women are required in the decision making. The what are the reasons that we want that uh, women to be in the decision making role. Uh, not only in the corporates, of course this is the theme of the conference, but at the same time in other spheres as well. So that's the another engagement probably we can have. The third broad theme uh, we can think of is about uh, what prevents women in participation, participating in these areas. So what are the factors? Why women are not sort of uh, given a chance, opportunity to come into some of the areas, why they are excluded, denied, deprived of their, you know, sort of decision making role in the in those sectors. So that can be another theme that we can uh, discuss. And lastly, probably we can also deliberate on that what could be done uh, which will allow women to be more engaged um, in this decision making uh, roles in different spheres. I think that will sort of uh, give a wholesome treat to the discussion and therefore I suggest these broad four themes the status, present status then and trends and the second theme will be the, the why is it required 
Third, uh, what prevents women from taking a lead role in the decision making process and what can be done to ensure and encourage the women's participation. I think if we can limit this, this thing, then this will be sort of, uh, you know, uh, it will be easy for us to be engaged with the team. And of course, the speakers will be having their own kind of liberty to digress and then go into other areas uh, of discussion as well. So, and I will be presenting my views on four, these four themes at, this, at the last. So, with this introduction uh, to the panel, I invite uh, Madam Professor Chandana Vaidu to uh, present our things. Uh, she will be, you will be making the presentation. Yeah. So, you have to see the presentation as well. I guess. I can okay. okay, please. Go ahead. Ma'am, uh, we would like to offer our thanks to you through a small felicitation. I would like to request my colleagues to please come forward and felicitate Professor Chandana Goswami. We would also like to offer our felicitation to Dr. Shripana Mura, ma'am. I would like to request Dr. Orunima Mora and Dr. Chayanka Roy to come forward and facilitate Dr. Goma. <laughs> Next, we would like to offer our presentation to Srimadhi Papuri Chetia. I would like to request Dr. Indran Neka and Sudeshna Chaudhary. We would also like to offer a felicitation to Professor N. N. Sharma, sir. I would like to request Dr. Urnima Bora and Dr. Chani Karan to offer the presentation. <laughs> Next, we would like to offer our presentation to the moderator of this session, Professor Chaudhary Govasa. I would like to request Deshan Chaudhary and Dr. Indrani Deka to do the same. Professor Goswami Ma'am to deliver her presentation. Thank you. So good afternoon everybody. <clears throat> Thank you Vice Chancellor sir and the members of PK Handic State Open University uh, for your invitation. And it is a topic, it's one of my big topics. I'm so fond of it. You know, talk of women and women empowerment, I jump in. And uh, so here I am to share a few of my thoughts. This is a disclaimer. No two women are similar and no two stories are same. I think Nandita may have also mentioned that in the beginning. So therefore we don't have a common prescription for you as to what will you know, facilitate a career progression for you. And we have to be creative in charting our path. That's what I have learned from my experience. Creativity, different level of creativity you have to think of. Forget all social conditioning and all that stuff. You know, we, you and me, all, we've undergone that social conditioning as, you know, in our childhood, like, you know, how we should conduct ourselves. I was told, you know, even Dahante Dahanti kind of, doesn't look nice, huh? And then I was also told, why do you talk so much? And then, I, we were also told what our capabilities are and what is expected from me as a girl and a lady and all that, no? But thankfully, I grew up in an environment where all that was not really so much, so much there. It was there a little bit, but I could force my way out. But these set of beliefs that remain in our minds and they dictate our actions and we are not even aware of it. If the conditioning was positive and affirmative, it 
helps us. But then, you know, if it doesn't match the conditioning that we got and what is required in the workplace, then there is a whole lot of discomfort that we face. And there is conflict. And in this tug of war, I think most women give up their jobs. Best part is that we have education, we have the skill set, so getting a job is not very difficult. You know, we manage to get a job, but the difficulty comes a little later. Some obstacles come and they are very specific to women. These are some of the challenges which we are all familiar with. You also know about all that. Marriage is the one. <laughs> to get married or not to get married. Please understand you get married, there are going to be some issues. I have seen women not having a stable job because she opted to follow her husband wherever he was posted. I respect that choice. It is a choice that she is making. And then also there are smart women. That also I have seen that wherever this husband is posted, they will try to find out some kind of avenues. Understood you will not get a permanent job, but something or the other. So what happens? In a span of time that CV grows. It is important to keep the CV growing. Alright. So the CV grows and in future it helps in recruitment. Or you use this opportunity to upgrade yourself. Now it's very easy. You know, you have so much of online stuff. Alright. But it, and it is easy to do that. So, you know, if you take a choice to follow your husband, you can still do something about yourself. Then master marriage, motherhood. No? <laughs> so, you know, on one hand this fear is there, oh, biological clock is ticking away. And on the other hand, oh, I want a little bundle of joy. Now these, you know, they are at conflict. Professional and personal dilemma, tug of war. You say no to motherhood, there are people who will tell you how bad you are. Isn't that? No? And you say yes to motherhood, nobody will come to help you. You have to take care of the baby on your own only. So, carrier takes up. Uh, pause out there. Those opting for motherhood, I think we've all undergone the same story. No? You do not have a person who will take care of the child, somebody that you can trust. And creches are also not available. Sir, after you must even pressure. And oh, very nice, very nice. Pittsburgh University also we had one. And uh, under this, you know, we tend to buckle down. Very natural. And then, of course, it will result in quitting. This is a statistics which I got, which says that the la female labor force participation rate has gone up by 4.2 percentage, and it is 37 percent. That is one positive side. But there is another downside from another study. It is talking of the employability gender gap. It means that if you are in the age group of 15 to 64, people out there in that age group, how many of them are working in the workforce? 17.1% of men are there in the workforce and it's only 19.2% of ladies. And what struck me most is that it seems in the 90s it was 40%. And this is uh, an area of research if you want to take it up. For female participation, if it was 40% in the 90s, in 2023, why should it be 19.2%? It's very disturbing. So what pushes a woman to quit? Toxic work culture, bordering on sexual harassment may not really be direct sexual harassment. All of my microaggressions, biases, all these, you know, they make us feel that it's not worth worrying. And I have heard of this personally, that this uh, lady is there, last year's performance was damn good. So, by going by that, her annual increment should have been very high, you know, the incentive or whatever they did. But they gave her a lower one and she was very, uh, you know, kind of depressed. Why? Answer I gave her because they are going on a maternity leave. They will be paying you for six months without doing any work. I think that's the only thought process out there. And why there are efforts to retain efficient men, efficient women, you know, especially this motherhood kind of a case, Nobody takes that much of effort. Given all these stories, bright side I would like to share stories of these ladies. I have read their books and I am so kind of impressed by, by you know, what they have done and how they have gone about. 
you can identify them na arunpati bhattacharya indra guri of course and this is Sheryl Sandberg. So let's start with Arunthati Patancharya. Do you know what was her uh, degree? What she must have studied? Any guess? English. English for you, banker who is the chairman of SBI. Huh? So please don't underestimate yourself. English postgraduate. She joined State Bank of India. Got married. Had a child with learning disability. How much more problem do you want in your life? No? And on top of that, there are transfers. No? They will transfer you here and there every two years, three years. All right. Please read her book. The way she handled union issues, no? it's, it's terrific kind of. Without losing her cool, she is doing it. But never for a moment quitting was an option. Never for a moment. And she acknowledges in a biography that it was her support system of family and friends uh, that allowed her to continue working. This is a very important learning. Even in my career, it was family, friends, neighborhood, aunties, believe me, I left no one kind of ask for him as a when required. Indra Nui, CEO of PepsiCo, she also took up all work-related challenges with a never said I attitude. In her book, she talks of uh, balancing, juggling, compromising, while maintaining relationships and responsibilities. Why did she join PepsiCo? All other things remaining constant because, because it was close to her home, husband's office was also nearby. See, same thought process like us. Na? And she also wrestled with the conflicts of a working mother. Her biography also mentions that same kind of a support system. Sheryl Sandberg. She talks about how women did not feel the necessity to ask for equal compensation or for better the benefits and all. You know, we, we really can't ask. When I joined Tejpur University, I had two small kids. They had to be towed, one to the school, one to the crèche. It was only one professor, very senior professor, who told me, why don't you ask for a school bus? Every university provides school bus. If he would not have told me that, I would not have known how to ask. All right. And uh, her case was so even horrible. There are places, offices she had to visit, no ladies' washrooms also. And she mentions this point which I find it uh, very important and very useful. She says that we need to get rid of our internal barriers that are within us because of the social conditioning. Similarities in these biographies, all of them were pretty good. Quitting was never an option for them. And they all created support systems to facilitate this work-life balance. They had supportive spouses. By the way, supportive spouses don't come in packages, huh? You have to create it. Spouse will be there. Spouse will be there. But supportive spouse is your duty. How to create that supportive spouse? And they found creative ways to manage work and family. They asked for help when required. So what sets a strong woman apart? You know, grit plays a role out here. And since I'm using this word grit pretty all the time, so I put in the definition also out here. So this is a personality trait possessed by individuals who demonstrate passion and perseverance towards a goal despite being confronted by significant obstacles and distractions. So here we are ladies trying to make a career Lot of distractions. Alright, you have good in-laws, bad in-laws, good spouse, bad spouse, good children, bad children, homework to be done, what else and all that. Now, those are distractions. Even then, if you can kind of keep that focus. And those who possess grit are able to self-regulate and postpone their need for positive reinforcement while working diligently on a task. We all like external validation. We like when people tell us, oh, you are doing a good job, a uh, wonderful mother, handling office, handling home and all that. We like that, but don't wait for that. It will not come. If it comes, it's a bonus. Without that also, you should be able to push yourself ahead. Self-regulate. Strong women I have seen, well, irrespective of the social class, huh? including my maid also, I am doing this sentence. You know, they think like that. It is necessary to work and there will be difficulties. 
and I will fi find a way around them. So I am talking of across all social class. And when you have that kind of a thought in mind, it gives rise to positive feelings, things which will kind of propel you to work. And of course then, your outward behavior will be there. Social conditioning in childhood have led to women having a set of beliefs that the mother is solely responsible for home and children. No? My mother also you know, worked as a uh, professor in Handy Girls College. She also worked and did home, both. But then she tells me, you know, home you have to manage. Children are your life. Do you get that? Huh? So, see, that is how we've been trained up. But it is not the case. It's a, a case of equal partnership, no? 50-50. So workload has to be shared. So that is one conditioning and on the other hand you are working in a place because you have so much of uh, education, uh, experience, skill set. Your organization has huge expectations from you. Can you see the conflict that is happening out here? This is referred to as a double bind position. If you can overcome this dilemma, then you will find that you can make a breakthrough and you can discover creative solutions to your problems. Creative on a different level of creativity you will have to do. I would just like to share an example here. When I was, uh, I joined Kishpur University. No family system out there, no support system. Then no creche also. So what I did one fine day, I called the rickshaw wala and I said, Chalo, wherever I, I say you have to go, you will go. And I moved around this to town, looking at, you know, you know signboards, crash, itha, kaiki, nahi, kind of. And I found one where they say, uh, residential accommodation for nursery going school children or something like that. I just walked into it. So I told the lady, if you can keep nursery going school children, you can keep my son also, he's two years. I literally did that. And it worked. It worked. I forced her to keep my son. And then it solved my problem. So other creativity also. Now when the son grows up, patient on going to work, when he comes back from school, I told my neighborhood auntie, auntie, second half, two hours, please keep my son with you. And I will, I will kind of pay you for that. She refused the payment, but it solved my problem. So therefore, you know, creativity of different levels. And don't feel bad about it. Please explore your limiting beliefs. These are the beliefs that hold us back. We believe about self, belief about the world, belief about the life in general. So if you have limiting belief about your own self, you think along these lines that something is wrong with me. Something is wrong with me, therefore, you know, I can't work or it's not happening. About the world, you keep on thinking that other people are not allowing me to work. I have done a FDP program, I had to go to Ahmedabad. My university refused to give me leave. I was entitled for study leave. I kept on sticking to it. I said, Chala, you don't give me the study leave, give me without pay, but I am going. He said, do what you want. But if I would have not insisted, I would have said the world does not allow me to perform. Generally, limiting belief about life, you feel that things are actually difficult. Now, if you think about me going to Angola for nine months, leaving two small kids at home, it was difficult. It was indeed a difficult choice. So, if I would have succumbed to that, that would have never happened. If the FDP would, FDP would have not happened, my British family would not have happened, then the leap would not have happened, other things, you know, would not have happened. Let's come to women in leadership position. You know, there is a difference between how women and men react to responsibilities given. Give a man a responsibility, even if he does not know 50% of that, whatever that job is, he will take up the responsibility and say, oh, there you Come to women, even if we know 80% of that, we will say, oh God, I don't know 20%, I can't do it. Take us say, after that, please, don't sing that song that nobody gives us work. All men get good work. Some problem is with us also, no? So please be careful. Next time, a responsibility is given to you, take it up. You have come so far, you are so educated. What's a big deal you will learn on the way? So some things that can strengthen our confidence. 
exposure. Do whatever work comes to you. Volunteer for work. You know, go outside the state, see other conferences and yeah, whatever it is. No? That will that will enhance your confidence to a great level. Another area where we are a little shaky is financial literacy. How many of you file your own income tax returns? Please do. <laughs> Please do. It's not at all difficult. Uh, it's not at all difficult. That's a starting point. And then understand your organization's finances. Where are you working? Is it a bus center? Is it a revenue center? What are the sources of funds? Where are the expenditures happening? Hey, no big deal. Just a little bit of awareness. Then we also have some expectations from the organization. What the organization can do to promote women. First request is that I would request any organization to let go of the stereotypical prejudices regarding uh, women's capability. And we men have to be sensitized. I am so thankful I worked in Peshku University where my colleagues did not treat me women with any kind of. Alright, so and I got a lot of opportunities out there. Women need a support system where they can you know, work in peace and not bother about childcare, transportation and all that. I remember I told my boss, if you want me to work on holidays, give me two days advance notice because I have to prepare that setup at home. Once that setup is prepared, I have no problems working on holidays or Sundays or whatever it is. We have government rules regarding maternity leave, creche, childcare leave and all that. But please let this not be misused, right? especially the childcare leave. There are uh, corporates where they have the office care and the company meals also. That's a big you know, blessing kind of. You don't have to worry about your kitchen. Get up in the morning, if you have children who so defeated, your job is done. All your meals are taken care of in the office. And you have a, a company care, so you don't have to worry about transportation also. This is this next suggestion is which I found in a NGO and associated with an NGO called SESTA. And this is what they are doing for their women, the mothers. They have to do field work, so you have to go on tours and all that. They have allowed uh, paying for an attendant to travel with the mother and child when on official tours. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child, that is what we used to say, so that your village and community is disappearing, so the organization has to play the role of a village. And at individual level, please raise concerns and ask the organization for the support system. Uh, if I would not have asked for a school bus service, and I am so again thank you to the professor, uh, then the other juniors, they would not have also got the benefit. And because the school bus service started, it became a regular affair. And being in circles, please read the Sherry Sanders book. Huh? She talks about the being in circles where women uh, get together, they have their own groups. And see, we have our separate issues. Alright, so there is discussion out there, there is uh, peer mentoring out there, uh, leadership skills training out there. So all those things which will help a woman confidently work. Do away with the social conditioning about gender roles. Please encourage your partners to play a more active role. Learn to delegate responsibilities to members of your support system, but keep in mind that they will not be as perfect as you. I think most of us are so scared of being delegating our child to the husband. Huh? Oh, oh, the child will survive. Alright, your husband will not be as perfect as you, doesn't matter. And ask for help. Asking for help doesn't mean that you are inadequate. Work life balance is 50 50. In my career, also, there were some years where I focused on my career. Children would go to school, to the minimum, you know, they would go. I was not bothered if they take first class or second class. That was not. But once they reached class 8, 8, 9, 10, then the focus comes on them. Really, Mura. Then my career took a backseat. So like that we have to progress. Because 100% 50 50 normal. But when you focus on career and you thought about negative home to feel guilty, or when you focus on the home and thought about negative career, you don't really feel guilty about it. Like we go on. And thank you very much. You can find me on LinkedIn.
to drive me out there and that's my email ID. If you want to connect with me, please do that. Thank you very much.